Hello and welcome to the third video. Uh, we're just going to continue on making our um, our ARM setup. Now I have um, this script controller open again. I haven't changed anything. One thing we didn't check was to make sure that we could scale everything. So if I just so I'll move this over here somewhere. If we begin to scale this point, you can see what's happening with our wrist point. It's not moving correctly. The reason for that is because distance is calculated in world space, whereas this script controller is being evaluated in parent space. So for example, if I scale this down and select this point here uh, and go into world space, it's at a value of 38.916 and that's being put into the parent space here, so 38.916, you see? So we have to find a way to um, basically negate the scale in our script. And what I'll do is just uh, make this 100 again. And the way we do that is just by introdu introducing a new variable. And I'm going to call this new variable root scale. Just evaluate that. And what we want to do is assign root scale to one of the scale axes of uh, our control. But at the moment and by default we have a Bezier scale controller on the root. So we can't actually get access to any individual uh, axes. So what we have to do is just apply a scale XYZ controller. And now we can actually get those individual tracks. And with the object selected, I'll just say assign track. And you can choose any one of these. I'll just choose, uh, choose X. And what we want to do is very simple to change this. Is just say times 100 divided by root scale. So by default, uh, the root scale value isn't equal to 1, it's actually equal to 100. So this is going to be 100 divided by 100, which is 1, so nothing will change. But then as things are scaled up and down, what's going to happen is we're just uh, controlling this distance, or controlling the control disk variable with a fraction. So we're mo moving it, we're telling it to move um, fractionally based off of the the distance, uh, the scale value here in the x-axis here. But what you'll notice is we can also still scale non-uniformly in y and z, and if we wanted x, and we get some strange results. So what I'm going to do is I'll just close the script controller down for now, and I'll just open up the wire parameter dialog. So I'll say animation wire parameters parameter wire dialog and I'll load the object into both sides. And I have a habit of going from right to left rather than uh, from left to right. I don't know why. Uh, just a habit I got into, I guess. So I'll come down and choose my X scale here. And I want to drive the Y scale based on the X. So here's a control direction. I want to go from right to left, so I choose this arrow. And uh, I want to keep on the X, and I also want to change the Z. So now I can't actually scale in Y and Z, and if I scale in X, everything scales up. So what we can do, if we go to local space, uh, the axes are still um, still there, we can still, uh, still be viewed. We can go to link info and just turn off Y and Z, and they're no longer no, uh, no longer uh, visible but they are still visible in, uh, when we're in view coordinates. Okay, so that's uh, that. So what I want to do is just select my arm control and go into my curve editor. And what I'm going to do is get my soft P value 
uh, actually we don't need to do that. Sorry, I've got a list of instructions off screen here and I think actually everything's fine for that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. Right. So the next step is to just position constrain uh, this soft blend point between the wrist and the arm control. And what this allows us to do is um, using the stretch value here we're going to be able to blend between um, the weight of this position and the weight of this position. So I'll just select the object, go to the motion tab in the command panel, select the position controller and assign a position constraint. I'll add the wrist point and the arm control as targets <clears throat> and right click to exit. And now what I want to do is bring up my wire parameter dialog again. Or parameter wire like a parameter wire dialog I should say. And because I like going from right to left, what I'm going to do is just refresh the selection in the left hand side. So here you can see the uh, position weights. I'll select my arm control and refresh the right hand side and get to my stretch parameter. So when the stretch is equal to zero we don't want any stretch and we know that the wrist point doesn't stretch beyond 70 so as we move this it doesn't stretch beyond 70. So what we want to do is uh, basically set up this like that. So we're going we're controlling the weight using the stretch parameter and it's going to be 1 minus stretch P. So when stretch P is equal to 0 it has a weight of 1 but then when stretch P is equal to 1 this is going to be equal to 0. So let's just hit connect and this one is just going to be like that. So when stretch P is equal to 0 the weight for the arm control is going to be 0 when it's equal to 1 it'll be 1. And now you can actually see we're getting the soft effect there and we can blend between those two eventually. What you'll also notice is that as we take this out the elbow moves down which is sort of annoying. What we can do for that is if we just take this out and I'll go into the top viewport for this take this out to a point where it's worst, say there. I'll just select the object itself, go to hierarchy, IK, and what we have to change is the preferred angle here. So I'll just change this, ooh, and something like that looks pretty good. So we just want to change this. value here. I found when I was doing this before a value of 5 works really well. So I'll just put this in. Minus 5. And for some reason 5 doesn't work this time. Oh, maybe it's because I have soft on. Yeah. So a value of 5 seems to work very well. put this back to 2. You see now we don't get that. Okay, I'll just pop this back to the default position. So now we're in a position to assign script controllers to our upper and lower arms. So let's do that. I'll just select my lower arm here and in X I'll apply a script controller and again by default it returns this value which we don't need and what I'm going to do is create a list of variables and the list is going to be quite long so the first one's going to be bone len this is going to be a variable or a constant I should say 
uh, equal to 30. Chain length, which is going to be a constant equal to 70. The elbow point, which is just going to be our elbow point. Pin P, which is going to be a parameter, which is our pin parameter assigned to the arm control. Root scale, because we need to work with our root scale again, the X uh, scale axis, so that we can scale everything up. Slide P, soft blend point. soft P, stretch P, upper arm point, and wrist point. So we've pretty much actually got all, a lot, well we've got a lot of variables there, pretty much all the uh, objects in the scene and stuff like that uh, which we can add without circular dependencies are added in here. And then we also have the four parameters from our uh, arm control object. So bone length is going to be 30, chain length is going to be 70, the elbow point is going to be a node, pin P is going to be assigned as a track, the root scale is going to be another track, Slide P, again another track on our arm control. Soft blend P is going to be this smaller small helper. Soft P, yep, that's going to be an animation track again. Stretch P. Upper arm point is going to be this point here, and the wrist point is going to be this one here. Okay, so I'm just going to put bone len here and evaluate that. And what I'm going to do is go to my curve editor, I'll copy this script, and I'll paste it onto the wrist. And when I paste this as a copy, what's going to happen is the wrist is going to inherit the bone length which is currently set to uh, 30 but we'll just redefine that so it's equal to 40 instead. So you see now it's equal to excuse me a length of 30. Very simple we just uh, evaluate, uh, I beg your pardon, we redefine this so it's 40. Say OK. One sort of annoying thing is when we close our track view here Oh, uh, yes, yeah, so that one of the script controllers disappears. That's kind of an annoying thing. Uh, what we can do is just double click it on the in the motion panel and it will stay there. So now we're uh, ready to um, actually start writing our pro sort of proper expressions. And what I'm going to do is up here, I'm going to say create a new variable in the expression called soft len and that's going to be equal to the distance between the soft blend point and the wrist point multiplied by 100 divided by root scale so that the overall global scaling doesn't affect this and then what we'll say is soft len uh, times 3.0 divided by 7 why 3.0 divided by 7? Well, this is we're going to have to move this proportionately, like I was mentioning uh, in the first video with the stretch EIK. These bones need to be um, moved proportionately. So this uh, bone was initially 30 units, and the chain was 70. So we don't want to apply this uh, the soft len, uh, the full effect of the soft len uh, variable to to this. What we want to do is um, just assign a portion of that, and that's going to be uh, where this fraction comes in times stretch p and the reason we have the stretch parameter there is so that we can uh, turn this effect on and off 
So when stretch p is equal to 1, we're going to get all of this effect, and when it's equal to 0, we're going to get none of, none of the effect. And we're going to end this by saying bone len. And we can just evaluate that. And what I'll do is just copy and paste that in there. And I'll change the 3 to a 4 because uh, this bone has a distance of 40 by default. And I'll evaluate that. And you'll notice that I have 4.0 divided by 7. You need to, if you're going to do uh, a division, you need to define this uh, value as a float rather than an integer. And the way you define it as a float is just by putting 0 0.0 afterwards. If I had defined this as an integer and tried to divide by 7, it would return 0 here. And then we would just get the, the bone length. But if I divide, um, define it as a float, then we will get the fraction. So both of these have been evaluated. Let's come up and just enable stretching. And there we go. So now we have our soft stretching happening. So that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, we'll again continue just working on the arm.